hey guys welcome back to my channel um today we're going to be making the skirt that you have seen at the beginning of this video and for the materials i'm going to be using winter king and a measuring tip to take some of the measurements as i work i'll also be using a five millimeter crochet hook and then you also need a darning needle to weave in your ends and that's all uh, for those who would prefer the written pattern, I'll be leaving the link in the description box. You can check it out and go purchase the pattern. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be demonstrating for a size medium to large. So let me get my yarn. I'll be using the color orange. And I am going to start off with a chain of... 120 so you're going to start off with a slip knot so this is how i do my slip knot i just twist this over put my hook and then i yarn over pull through and then yarn over pull through again and then i'll get this tail and pull it so that's how i do my slip knot so i'm going to go ahead and make my chain of 120 20 so yarn over pull through yarn over pull through and those are two i'm going to continue to do this until i have a total of 120. so if you're dif different size the return pattern is available on my etsy shop as well as ravelry you can go check it out to get your um size right All right, so now I have my 120 chains and I'm going to make sure my chain is not twisted. And I'm going to go into the very first chain that I made with a slip stitch. So I'm going to slip stitch into that chain. Insert your hook and pull through. And that's my slip stitch. And now we formed a ring so we are going to round one and for round one you're going to chain three and that counts as a double crochet every chain three at the beginning of the round counts as a double crochet so this is my chain three and I'm going to go into the next chain which is this one with a double crochet and then double crochet into the next chain, double crochet into the next chain. And you're going to keep repeating this all the way around until you get to the very last chain, which is this one. So since I had a total of 120 chains in the beginning, I should be having a total of 120 double crochets if I include the chain three as a stitch. Alright, so I'm almost coming to the end of my round and I have only one stitch left, one chain left. So I'm going to go into it with my double crochet and that marks the end of my round. So I'm going to slip stitch on top of the first chain three of my round. So one, two, three and into the third chain, I'm going to insert my hook and pull through. So that slip stitch marks the end of my round one and this is what you should be having this is your waistband if you prefer to make it thicker you can go ahead and do some more rows but this is going to be my waistband so um we're going to start working on the mesh part of the skirt the one that creates those uh mesh the mesh effect so we are going to chain three and this counts as a stitch so you're going to go into that same exact stitch into that same chain three and place your second double crochet 
So we're, we have two double crochets because the chain three counts as a stitch. Then you're going to chain 11. So after your 11 chains, you're going to prepare for a double crochet. And then you're going to skip four chains, four stitches, sorry. So one, two, three, four. And into the fifth, you're going to go in there with two double crochets. So this is one and two. So this is what you should be having. Then you're going to chain 11, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Prepare for a double crochet. Skip the next four stitches. So one, two, three, four. And into the fifth, you're going to go in there with two double crochets. So that should be creating these loops here. So you're going to continue doing that all the way around. Chain 11. Skip four stitches, one, two, three, four. And into the fifth, you're going to place two double crochets, one and two. So go all the way around with this and I'll meet you back when I'm almost ending my round. So I've gone all the way around and you should be having four chains left. And then you're going to chain 11. And then you're going to go on top of the first chain three one, two, into the third chain and make your slip stitch. And that marks the end of round two or the very first round of the mesh effect. So we're going to round three and for round three, you're going to chain one and turn your work. We're going to be working in the opposite direction of the previous row. And then you're going to slip stitch into the chain 11 spaces. So you're going to slip stitch five times. One, two, three, four, and five. So those were slip stitches. And then you're going to chain three and double crochet into that same space. The same 11 chain space so that's what we have so this counts as two double crochets and then chain 11 and then go into the next space the next chain 11 space with two double crochets so this is the first one and then the second one we are not placing into any chains you just go into the space and then you're going to chain 11 and go into the chain 11 space the next one and place your two double crochets and you're going to repeat this until you get back to the beginning of your round so until this Part here I'm going to go all the way around until I get to this chain 11 space don't forget it sorry it's a chain of 11 in between the double crochets So I have made it all the way around and you can see I'm at this very last loop of the first round of the second round because this is our first round this is our second round so I'm here before we join to wind up our third round so you're going to chain 11 And after your chain of 11, you're going to go on top of the very first chain three. 
and go into that top chain and make your slip stitch and that means we've finished round three and now we are going to round four and round four is basically going to be the same exact as round three so you chain one just like we did here chain one turn your work slip stitch five times into this chain 11 space so one two three four and five and after your slip stitches you're going to chain three and that counts as a stitch and then you're going to go into that same chain 11 space with a double crochet so we've created the two double crochets the slip stitches help us to move towards the middle section of the chain 11 space so that these two double crochets are placed in the middle section of the um, chain 11 space plus every time we turn our work every row this is going to help us to have the same line in one line one straight line instead of having it slanting so after your two double crochets you're going to chain 11 and then go into the next chain 11 space with two double crochets so that's the repeat we're going to keep repeating this for a total of 14 rounds all together including the waistband so since we have one two three and this is our fourth round so after this round you're going to have to do 10 more rounds of mesh and then i'll meet you guys back at that point keep repeating row four or round four or round three because they're the same until you have a total of 14 rounds all together including the west band and i'll meet you at that point Okay, so after your 14 rounds, uh, this is what you should be having. We have the waistband and 13 more rounds of our mesh pattern. And now I've finished placing the slip stitch to finish up my uh, 14th round. And I've also chained one. And now I'm going to cut my yarn. And pull through. So that's on round 14. And the, the other thing that I'm going to do is to get a very short strand, something of this length. I'm going to show you what we are going to use it for. And now you're going to identify, uh, you can see where we have our, our uh, strand here that's the line where the seam line is it keeps going like this but at least it's at the back and i want it to stay at the back it won't show if you're not very keen at uh, paying attention to detail but since i very well know that this is my back side i'm going to turn my work to the front side so that this strand here is at the back so we at the front and you're going to identify where you want to uh, make your slit so i want mine to be on the right on the right side the right front side so that means i'm going to go to this side because this side is going to be where my right leg lies and i'm going to get just one group of the two double crochets you can get whatever spot as long as it's on the right side so that that's where your slit is if you want it to be on the left then you'll consider this side so i'm considering this side and i'm going to get uh two double crochets here i'm going to go in 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 those are three one two three and we want a total of five in and in and now you're going to get your strand that you cut earlier on i don't know i've placed mine okay it's here 
and you're going to get that strand and pull it through these double crochets make sure you don't lose it so I'm doing this on camera so that you see exactly what I did and that's what we have and now you're going to carefully tie a knot that is secure enough make sure it's neat and you're going to just make a very tight knot so I'm tying it twice this should be okay but if you're not very sure about that then you can go ahead and tie it more times so this is my third time and from this point you're going to cut So this is where our slit is going to lie, like that. And now we're going to start doing something different. So, okay, so after tying your knot, you're going to count four chain 11 spaces. So one from this knot here. So we have one, two, three, and into the fourth. You're going to place your stitch marker there and you're going to do the same on the other side i don't have my second stitch marker here with me but i'll be using a string instead so one two three and into the fourth you're going to place your stitch marker and this time i'm going to be using uh, a string just a normal string as long as you can mark it you can use anything so now we are going to start working in rows we are no longer working in rounds because now our rows are going to start from this and end here we are no longer joining them because we want this slit to be long up to the feet so you're going to grab your yarn and make a slip knot and now we are going to start working on row one i'll call this row one because it's our very first row all the other ones were rounds so remove your stitch marker i removed it from where i had put it and into that same exact chain space which is four eleven chain spaces away from the knot so one two three and into the fourth you're going to uh chain three I've attached it in the middle section so after your chain three you're going to double crochet so that gives us two double crochets and then chain 11 and then go into the next chain 11 space and place two double crochets so we've gone back to the usual pattern chain 11 And then two double crochets into the next chain 11 space so I'm going to do that until I get to the chain 11 space before the one with the next stitch marker and I'll show you how to wind up our row so let me go ahead and do that I'll meet you back at this point so i have reached that 11 chain space before this one with a stitch marker so i'm going to remove my stitch marker from here put it aside and then i'm going to chain 11 and go into that chain 11 space that had the stitch marker with two double crochets and that marks the end of row one I told you these are going to be rows so this is our very first row and uh, now we are going to row two and for row two you're going to chain one turn your work and you're going to do five slip stitches into the first chain 11 space so this one 
so you're going to make five slip stitches three four and five and after your slip stitches you're going to chain three and place one more double crochet into the same space so we have two double crochets here and then you're going to chain 11 and then go into the next chain 11 space with two double crochets like that and we are going to continue this until the second last chain 11 space and I'll show you how to wind up row 2 Okay, so I've reached my second last chain 11 space and I've placed my two double crochets there. That means I'm only left with one chain 11 space. So I'll chain 11 and go into that very last chain 11 space with two double crochets. One and then the second one. So we have our two double crochets here. And now we're going to row three. So for row three, you'll chain eight and turn your work. So after each chain of, uh, of eight, you're going to turn your work and then place two double crochets into the first chain 11 space. So this one. Like that. That's how it will look like. And then you're going to continue to do chain 11, two double crochets. So those are my 11 chains and then two double crochets into the next chain 11 space and continue this until you get to the second last chain 11 space and I'll show you how to wind up your row 3 So I've reached my second last chain 11 space and now I'm going to chain 11 and then place two double crochets into this last chain 11 space and that's not all so you're going to chain 5 And then place one double crochet on top of the very last stitch here. So one double crochet. So remember we started our row with a chain of eight which counted as chain five and a double crochet. So that's why we are ending our row, our row with a chain five and one double crochet. So what you do at the beginning of your row is exactly what you do at the end of the row so that's why the very first gap here looks almost the same size as this so uh, the reason why I was emphasizing the rows is because you're going to keep repeating these rows until you have the length of the skirt that you want so we're going to row four 
so we are not yet done this was row three so now we are going to row four so you're going to chain three turn your work and then you're going to place one double crochet into the chain five space so that almost counts as two double crochets and then you're going to chain 11 and then go into the next chain 11 space with two double crochets and then chain 11 two double crochets into the next so go all the way across and I'll meet you towards the end of this row, row four. This is what you should be having. So we've come to the end of row four and I've placed my two double crochets in the last chain 11 space, but then there's this chain eight space. So you're going to chain 11 and go into that last chain eight space with two double crochets and that will be the end of this row and now you're going to keep repeating row two three four two three four two three four i'm going to be leaving timestamps in the description box so that you can track where you are and i am going to go ahead and keep repeating these rows until i get the length of the skirt that i want and for me i'll be letting you know how many rows that i did for this skirt but i usually do between 30 30 um 32 to 35 rows that's what i usually do because i've done this skirt several times so i wanted to show you the slit part so that you can see how it looks like so you can see we have separated this part like that we shall do the edging later don't worry about that uh, it will come together and now we are going to keep working until we get the length of the skirt that we need and then i'll get back to you guys when i have my 30 something rows i'll be letting you know how many that i did um the 30 the number that i'm mentioning whatever it is 32 33 whatever it is starts from the beginning here don't worry you don't have to do 30 more rows or something you have to start counting from the waistband all the way down to your feet those are the rows that i'm talking about so let me go ahead and keep repeating row two three and four until i'm done and then I'll get back to you guys to wind up the skirt with the edging and all the little details to finish up. All right, so I went on to do row two, three, and four until I got the length of the skirt that I needed. You should notice that your skirt becomes narrower at the base. It's not as long as what we had before. So it keeps becoming narrow towards the base of the skirt because of the decreases that we are doing along uh, the length of the skirt. And then uh, my total, the total length of my skirt is about 45 inches and that's for a tall person. And now the other thing that we are going to do is to make a long chain. I've already made mine. So make a, just a very simple chain of about 200 to 250 to go through your uh, waistband and then the other thing that i did was uh, i told you i'll tell you that number of rounds that i did or rows that i did i did a total of 33 rows all together from the waistband all the way down to, to the feet so i did a total of 33 rows because now I'm considering these as rows so that we can get the general number. Now, um, you're going to place your work towards the front side because I know my slit is going to be here on the right leg. 
so you're going to identify the mid section of your skirt so mine would be around here because the slit is here this would be somewhere around my navel so you're going to get your chain and you're going to go in and out of every two stitches so I have two stitches here I'm going to put it through and I'm going to go in and out of every two stitches until I make it back to this point So I've made it all the way around and this is going to help us um, get a better fitting for our waistband. Because remember, uh, the starting chain was too big. So this is going to help us gather the waistband to give, give us a better fitting for our skirt. So this is these are the chains that will make a knot here at the front and if you want you can go ahead and attach beads at the end of these chains and you can see that so the slit is here and now we are going to be doing the edging for our slit so I hope your work is on the right side by now because this is the outer side of my work this is the wrong side and then this one is the right side of my work so we want to create that edging for the slit and we are going to be starting from the bottom corner of the slit all the way up to that knot and then we go all the way down but we are working all this on the right side of our skirt so if you're working your rows they should be on the right side of your skirt so I'm going to go all the way up to the knot and then all the way down to the other corner of my skirt of my slit so we're going to attach our yarn this is going to be a random placement of these shells we're going to be creating shells with a spike at the top to give it some more detail so you're going to get your yarn I'm trying to get the midsection of this yarn so that the yarn is not moving around the whole time okay so you're going to start off with a slip knot and we're going to attach our hook in this very fast row at the base of our skirt because this is the bottom of our skirt you're going to attach your yarn and now it's time to start working on the spikes and the shells at the same time so a shell is four double crochets then you chain four then slip stitch at the base of the chain four and then you do four more double crochets so here we are I told you it's a random placement I don't know what row you ended on but you're going to chain we've already attached our yarn here so you're going to make a single crochet here in that same exact row and now you're going to go into the next row or I'm just trying to find the best placement for this shell so I'm going to go into this space and I place a total of four double crochets so I have my four double crochets now I'm going to chain four and I'm going to slip stitch at the base of this chain four so I'm going to go into these two loops there and I'm going to make a slip stitch so that will create a spike here and then I'm going to go into the same exact space and I'm going to do a total of four more double crochets so my four double crochets are done and this is what I have so after this I'm going to go into this space 
and place a single crochet so since it's a random placement just find the most suitable place to put your shells so we are done with that we are going to make the next um, shell so I'm going to be placing two single crochets in between I don't know how you want to um, space out your shells it can be one single crochet it's also okay but I'll be placing two single crochets but it can be one if you'd wish to have that so after this you're going to go I think the best placement for the next shell is in this row so I'm going to go in there with four double crochets one two three four and then I'm going to chain four and place a slip stitch at the base of the chain four and then go into the same exact space with a total of four double crochets so we have that those are two shells so far and now I'm going to find the best place to to put my single crochet if I put it here it's very far it's creating that fold so I'll go into this space and I place my two single crochets sorry I had said double crochet but it's two single crochets in between each shell so after your two single crochets you're going to go I'll go into this space and I place my four double crochets so this is really up to you you're going to find a suitable place to place your shells and then the most suitable way to space your shells this is really up to you so after this we've placed our third shell and my two single crochets are going to go into this row I'll go into the space and place my four double crochets chain four and then slip stitch and then place four more double crochets so after that you're going to go into the space with two single crochets and you're going to go all the way up just make sure you're spacing your shells evenly I'm not going to dictate where you're going to pl place your shells so just freestyle until you get to the knot that separates the slit this knot here and I'll get back to you when I have mine done So I have walked one side all the way from the base of the skirt to that knot that splits the slit.
so the slit is here and there's still some space here so i think i'm going to add one more shell and when i got to this point remember there were rows there were rows before we started the extension to the bottom of the skirt i just walked into this um double crochets that's where i placed my shells i hope you can see them and now i'm going to be placing my last shell to show you what i did i just prepared for a double crochet and went in between the two double crochets here so that's where i was placing the, the shells for the upper part of the slit towards the knot so i'm placing my shell which is for double crochets chain four slip stitch and then four more double crochets into the same exact um, space between the two double crochets so that's what i've done for the past four shells because remember i attached my yarn here that means the extension started from here so these shells here were going in between the two double crochets so after this i'm going to go somewhere in the same line as the slit and i'm going to place my two single crochets so i'm done with one side so that means we are going to go all the way down on the other side and we are going to do the same exact thing you're going to make sure you're doing the same exact thing as you did on this side so that you get the same number of shells and you balance your skirt so um we're going to prepare for a shell we're going to yarn over and just like we did for this one for this side we're going to do the same exact thing on this side so i was going into the two double crochets on the row before this one on the boundary so i'm going to do the same exact thing so go into these two double crochets below and place your shell three and four chain four and then slip stitch and go into the same exact space with four double crochets So I'm done with my very first shell. And then the next thing, I was placing my single crochets somewhere around here. So two single crochets and then prepare for a shell and go into the two double crochets one two three and four chain four slip stitch and then four more double crochets okay and then Place two single crochets and then go into these two double crochets and place another shell So after this shell, you're going to still place two single crochets and then place your fourth shell. So I think this is chaining my work so much. So I'm going to place my single crochets a bit closer to where I'm supposed to place the next shell okay so 
so I'm done with my fourth shell and this is actually it's the it's the fourth on this side so one two three four and now we're going to go back to the random placement of our shells just make sure you have the same number of shells on both sides so let me show you what that looks like if i'm to lay my skirt flat on the table so you can see the shells are facing each other and make sure you're spacing them the same exact way so that they look balanced on both sides so i'm going to go all the way down placing my shells and i'll come back and show you how my skirt will turn out to look okay so i've come to the end of the second side of the shells and this is how i've finished up my row of the shells with uh two single crochets on the opposite corner at the bottom of the slit so you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so at this point we are done with the slit part and the other thing that i did was to join the two shells the ones that are found in the corner of the slit i've joined them so that uh, we don't get this weird overlapping of the two shells you can see one is here and one is here i just went ahead to use my tapestry needle to join the two shells together and that's it this is how my skirt looks like so i'll be trying it on my dummy to give you the real look of the final product and i hope uh, your result has come out exactly like mine you're going to go ahead and weave in all your ends and do any final touches required for your skirt to be more beautiful if you wish and that's it for this tutorial i hope you guys liked it i'll see you in my next video